Joining us to give us an update on rose rosette disease in Oklahoma is Jen Olson with Plant Pathology. And Jen, we're out here at the Perkins Research Station where you talked last fall about doing some trials and experiments with different cultivars. Can you elaborate on that, please? Sure. So we're standing in the middle of our, our rose trial. And so these are roses that are you can go out and purchase. You may even have them planted in your landscape. And we're trying to evaluate them on whether or not they are susceptible or resistant or tolerant of rose rosette disease. How many cultivars did you start with last year? So is total in here right now, we have 41 cultivars. Okay. We added six this spring. And so we'll be evaluating them for at least one or two more years to see if they develop rose rosette. And just in that development, if it, if the plant dies from it, or in some cases it may self prune or, or just take care of itself. So what were you finding at the end of last year, the first year? So last year, we, in the fall, in September, we took some infected rose pieces and sort of push them into the center of our plants mm -hmm. in as a method of getting those mites to crawl off that carry the virus. You were intentionally trying right. to inoculate. Trying to yes. inoculate and get these infected. And in November, we had out of, we have 144 plants, I think. Um, we have one symptomatic plant. And this spring, we're starting to see the disease pop out on lots of different plants. I think that inoculation took. And now that we have it in these plots, mm -hmm. it's going to start to spread plant to plant. And so what we find is we often have pockets of disease. This row that we're standing in front of, one plant's uh, symptomatic, the next one's healthy, these two are symptomatic, and that'll probably be the pattern that we start to see. And, that, and that's kind of what happens in a neighborhood too. Your neighbor might get it, your rose might be healthy, come next year your exactly. rose might have it. So w let's talk about some of the symptoms again um, So there we have one here in front of us. There's different types of symptoms. Um, often when, plant, when roses come out in the spring, you may see a red color to the foliage that's normal. Mm -hmm. And as the plant, um, as those leaves mature, it, the red color goes away. And often if it's rose rosette, the red color just doesn't go away. And within that discolored area, you often find stunting, distortion, there's what we call a witch's broom where lots of shoots are coming out from one point. Um, and so identifying that tells you that that plant is infected with rose rosette. Now there was talk about being able to prune out some of that disease and potentially save your shrub. So there are trials looking at pruning as a method to remove rose rosette that are going on in Tennessee, and they're just finding it's not that effective. The trials aren't complete. It's probably going to be somewhere between 25 to 40 percent effective. Those numbers may change a little, mm -hmm. but it's just not that effective. And unfortunately, what you find is if this rose, if we started to prune it, mm -hmm. We already have early symptoms on this other section of the rose where the leaves are just starting to look a little bit different. They're, they're a little bit more yellow. They're a little bit misshapen compared to a normal rose. So you might prune out what's obvious, but miss these early symptoms. And remember, this is a, a virus that's transmitted by a mite that we can't see. Yeah, you're not just trying to remove the insect. Right. The virus the, is already in the plant. Right. And the mites may have already crawled to the other side of the plant. This virus actually goes into the root system, so it can pop out anywhere. Okay. And so for that reason, we don't just recommend pruning. It is recommended to remove and discard that plant because this is a new rose, mm -hmm. younger plant that it's a replacement that we put in this year. And it's very likely that this is going to just spread to this next plant. So if you take one out, um, you may want to hold off on replanting and try to treat those mites. The only thing labeled for home gardeners is horticultural oil. And so using that, try to reduce those mite populations and wait and make sure that you don't see it popping up on any other roses in your landscape. Get the disease under control and then you can focus on replacement. And of course, here with your research, you want the disease to we be want here the disease. because you're trying to find the one that is resistant to it. So, right, and so you're not just doing it here in Perkins either. 
No, we have, um, Dr. Snelly and I have a trial that's actually in Wichita, Kansas. Um, and then I have trials in Tulsa at the Municipal Rose Garden. That's a really big trial. There's over a thousand rose plants in one of the terraces there that we're looking at different uh, types of plants for rose rosette. So. All right, well, thank you for sharing this yep. update. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.